It's better to go back to the countryside than to follow the old ways of the city. Ma Tai Zhu, a college student, was framed by someone, but he gained a good fortune due to misfortune. From then on, he embarked on an extraordinary path, leading his fellow villagers to become prosperous. He originally intended to build his hometown with peace of mind and become a down dot to dot earth farmer. Unexpectedly, things went against our wishes, and various troubles came one after another novel keyword. Prison doctor, go back to the village to see a doctor. No pop-ups, prison doctor, go back to the village to see a doctor. Download the complete TXT collection, prison doctor, go back to the village to see a doctor. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Village Return. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Village Return, Dad, Mom, My Son is Back. Ma Tai Zhu looked at the small mountain village ahead, his eyes slightly moist. The place where he was born is called Huishu Village, named after a millennium-old locust tree in the village. Located deep in the Daba Mountains, with a remote location surrounded by mountains on all sides, transportation is very inconvenient. It is a well-known impoverished village in Ba County. Ma Taizhu aspired to go out of the countryside from a young age. I have been studying very hard and finally got admitted to the Provincial Medical University more than two years ago. At that time, my parents were overjoyed. The old Ma family finally produced a college student. In a remote place like Huishu Village, having a college student is a remarkable thing. The parents and villagers in the village all feel that the Laoma family is going to develop now. Ma Taizhu also feels the same way. He went to university in the provincial capital with great ambition, thinking that there was a bright future waiting for him. But something that happened later completely changed his life. During his college years, Ma Taizhu once saved a female classmate who was bullied by the wealthy second dot generation after class at night. At that time, Ma Taizhu was young and full of righteousness. When he saw a weak woman being bullied, he directly beat her up. But it turned out to be a huge disaster. That wealthy second dot generation is called Lu Tianhe, and his family has considerable influence in the provincial capital. Being beaten by Ma Taizhu from a rural area, the other party naturally won't give up easily. Afterwards, the Lu family brought the school and sued Ma Taizhu for intentional injury. At first, Ma Taizhu didn't take it seriously because there were surveillance cameras at the location of the incident, and there was also a female classmate who could testify. But what he never expected was that the school said the surveillance was broken. What made him even more incredulous was that the female classmate he saved actually gave false testimony. When I said I had a crush on her and saw her with Lu Tianhe, I felt jealous and started hurting others. After digging through the evidence, Ma Taizhu was expelled from school and sentenced to three years in prison for intentional injury. Due to his good performance, he was released from prison one year early. Just as he was released from prison, Ma Taizhu couldn't wait to rush back to his hometown. He hasn't seen his parents for a long time. I haven't returned for over two years, and Huishu village is still the same as before. Apart from the pleasant scenery, there are no other distinctive features. At this moment, it is April, the season when cauliflower is in full bloom. At a glance, the ground was covered in golden color. Beautiful and intoxicating. Following the route in memory, Ma Taizhu quickly returned to his own home. His home is located next to the big locust tree at the end of the village. Ahead, a mud-tiled house is hidden among the cauliflower. Approaching home, Ma Taizhu's mood became excited. But at this moment, a sound of panic came from ahead. Don't come over, otherwise I'll call someone. Ma Taizhu's face changed, and he was very familiar with this voice. It was from my sister Matsuelan. He he, he he, why don't you shout? Even if you shout, break your throat, today, no one will come. It's that bastard young Eru. Ma Tiezhu's eyes widened and he quickly charged towards the mud house ahead. Just a few dozen meters away, he saw a young man in his thirties rushing towards a plainly dressed woman in the yard. 
Matieju's canthus was about to crack, so he quickened his pace and rushed over with a roar. Young Eru, you are so stubborn that you dare to bully my sister. I'll see if I don't kill you today. Young Eru in the yard was startled and immediately turned his head to look. I saw Mataiju rushing towards me at a fast pace. He was stunned for a moment, then sneered, Oh, who should I be? It turns out I'm a prisoner from labor reform. The incident involving Mataiju occurred in the provincial capital. But as the saying goes, there is no wall that is impervious to the wind. Over time, the villagers learned about his imprisonment. Some people feel regretful, while others gloat. Young Eru belongs to the latter. Matsuelan's eyes lit up with joy. My younger brother has finally returned. Mataiju rushed forward and without saying a word, lifted his fist and threw it at Young Eru. Hey, you little brat is quite crazy. I'll teach you a lesson today. Young Eru gave a fierce smile and fearlessly swung his fist to greet him. He has a tiger back and a bare waist, much stronger than a horse iron pillar. In addition, he is also a village bully and often fights in the village. How could he be afraid of Mataiju? Iron pillar, be careful. Matsuelan looked worried, afraid that Mataiju would be harmed. Although Mataiju is not as sturdy as Yang Eru, his body is very agile. Always able to avoid Yang Eru's fist in advance and fiercely attack the opponent's weak points. Combined with that seemingly ruthless force, it turned out that Yang Eru was unable to withstand the attack. Little B, wait for me, today's matter is not over. After being punched again, Yang Eru didn't dare to fight anymore. After saying a harsh word, he turned around and quickly fled from here. Mataiju spat out the blood foam from his mouth and pointed his middle finger at the fleeing Yang Eru. Damn it, if you dare to come to my house again, I promise you'll cry and call me mom. He has been in prison for the past two years and is no longer the weak scholar he used to be. He is already familiar with fighting. Matsuelan walked up quickly and said with a concerned expression, Iron Pillar, are you okay? Sister, I'm fine, you don't have to worry. Mataiju shook his head, looked up and down at Matsuelan, and grinned, Sister, you are even more beautiful than before. Matsuelan, who has been a water spirit since childhood, is a famous beauty in Huaishu village. At the age of 20.5, I am like the blooming flowers. Beautiful and intoxicating. Matsuelan pursed her lips and smiled, Don't be stingy, it's you who is stronger than before. That's it. Mataiju proudly raised his chin and then curiously said, By the way, how could that bastard Yang Eru come to our house? Where are his parents? Matsuelan's eyes darkened and she said, My parents have gone to the county to see a doctor. Matieju's face changed and he quickly asked, looking for a doctor. What's going on? Aren't your parents always in good health? Matsuelan hesitated and seemed unsure of how to explain. Mataiju urged, Sister, tell me quickly. After hesitating for a moment, Matsuelan slowly said, You. Don't worry, I'll talk to you slowly. Okay. After a long time, Mataiju finally learned the truth and gritted his teeth in anger. Lu Tianhe, Zhou Jing, you two despicable people. I, Mataiju, swear that if I have the ability in the future, I will make you pay the price. It turned out that after he was imprisoned, his parents went to the provincial capital to look for the Lu family and prayed for them to be lenient and let their son go. But the Lu family not only did not agree, but also severely humiliated their parents and had someone break their father Ma Jiangwo's leg. Under the double blow, his father Ma Jiangwo quickly fell ill. Every now and then, I have to go to the hospital for hospitalization and treatment. The old couple went to the hospital yesterday and haven't returned yet. Yang Eru seized the opportunity and touched their house, preparing to bully Matsuelan. Fortunately, he came back in time. End of this chapter. Chapter 2. Xianyuan. You are listening at novelfull.audio.
Chapter 2 Xianyuan Seeing Ma Tiezhu's angry expression, Ma Tzuelan quickly said, Taizhu, you've finally come back now. Don't think about revenge anymore. The Lu family has money and power, and we can't compete. Ma Taizhu clenched his fists with a creaking sound, and his eyes showed a strong sense of unwillingness. He never knew this. The Lu family has wealth and power in the provincial capital, and with his current abilities, he cannot compete with the other party at all. If we force ourselves to seek revenge, we will only end up with a ruined family. He forced a smile and said, Sister, don't worry, I'm not a child anymore. I have a sense of propriety in my actions. Matsuelan nodded and said, Tai Zhu, are you hungry? I'll go cook for you now. After speaking, he turned around and entered the kitchen. Shortly thereafter, Matsuelan prepared a table of dishes. Ma Taizhu looked up and saw that the table was full of vegetarian dishes with very few oil stars. His eyes couldn't help but moisten slightly. It can be seen from here that in the past two years, the lives of parents and sisters have been extremely difficult. I guess so, back then, in order to send him to college, his parents almost took out most of their family savings. Afterwards, he ran back and forth to the provincial capital for his own business. Later on, my father fell ill and the family lost its pillars. How could life be good? Seeing that Ma Taizhu hadn't moved her chopsticks for a long time, Matsuelan quickly said, Taizhu, I didn't know you were coming back today. Our family didn't prepare any dishes, so I'll go out and buy some tomorrow. You can make do with it first. She thought Ma Taizhu was disgusted by the poor food. Seeing what his sister was thinking, Ma Taizhu immediately picked up his chopsticks and indulged in it. In no time, I ate all the dishes on the table. Sister, the dishes you cooked are really delicious. He grinned and stood up, saying, Sister, I'll go up the mountain and see if there are any medicinal herbs. I'll dig them up and sell them for money. You have worked hard these past two years, and from now on, I will take care of you. He picked up his basket, picked up his hoe, and left home. Be careful. Matsuelan cautioned from behind, watching her younger brother's distant figure, and a smile bloomed on her face. On the other hand, young Eru became increasingly angry as he thought back. He has been thinking about Matsuelan for quite some time now, and today he finally caught the opportunity. But at a critical moment, it was destroyed by Ma Taizhu. I also got beaten up. He is the leader of Huishu village, how could he swallow this breath? Little bastard, wait for me. His eyes rolled, and after a moment, he had an idea in his heart. He chuckled and left his home. Daba Mountain spans thousands of miles from east to west, spanning several provinces. It is home to various rare vegetation and precious medicinal herbs. It is a natural treasure trove. Ma Taizhu carried a basket and headed deep into the Daba Mountains. When he went to college, he studied traditional Chinese medicine. Although he didn't study for long, he could still recognize many medicinal herbs. He was busy until it was dark before returning to the village. The basket behind me is already filled with various medicinal herbs. There are Epimedium, Angelica dehurica, Astragalus membranaceus, and so on. They are all common medicinal herbs. According to his estimation, it should sell for one or two hundred yuan after being sun-dried. This is just an afternoon's harvest. If I go there every day, I can still sell for thousands of yuan a month. Just as he was happily rushing home, a person suddenly ran out of the cauliflower field ahead. Ma Taizhu was startled, and when he saw the person who appeared clearly, his face immediately darkened. Young Eru, why do you still want to be beaten up? He had a cold smile on his face, his eyes showing provocation, and he was not afraid of the other party even with his bare hands, let alone holding a hoe at the moment. Xiao Zemeo, let you be arrogant for a while. Young Eru sneered in his heart, but on the surface, he laughed heartily. Tai Zhu, you misunderstood. I came to apologize to you. I'm really sorry about what happened during the day, it was all my fault. 
Ma Taizhu was taken aback and confused by the scene before him. What kind of person is Yang Eru? He knows it all too well. Will this kind of guy take the initiative to apologize? The sun is setting in the west. He didn't notice at all that a figure emerged from the cauliflower field behind him, silently approaching with a red brick. Don't use such nonsense to fool me, come on, what are your intentions? Ma Taizhu sneered and didn't believe Yang Eru's words at all. Yang Eru chuckled and said, Taizhu, you misunderstood. I really came to apologize. Ma Taizhu was about to speak, but suddenly felt a pain in the back of his head. Then the whole person lost consciousness and collapsed straight down. Yang Eru immediately rushed forward and punched and kicked the fallen Ma Taizhu. Grass mud horse, little bastard, aren't you arrogant? Show me another arrogant one. Er Hu Gu, it's almost done. Don't beat it to death. A young man with a pockmarked face next to him advised. He was holding a bloody brick in his hand, and it was Ma Taizhu who had just launched a surprise attack. The young man with a pockmarked face is called Li Si, and he is a famous second-rate student in the village. I often hang out with Yang Eru on weekdays. During the day, Yang Eru found him and discussed how to retaliate against Ma Taizhu. So there was a scene just now. It's best to kill him. This little miscellaneous hare dares to harm my good deeds. Even if he doesn't die today, he must be stripped of his skin. Yang Eru had no intention of stopping, still punching and kicking there. Seeing that Ma Taizhu was lying on the ground without any movement, Li Si's face changed slightly and he crouched down to explore the former's breathing. Suddenly, he was so scared that he stumbled back and showed panic on his face. Er Hu Gu, I'm not. I'm not angry anymore. Yang Eru suddenly stopped his hand movements and quickly squatted down to sniff the breath of Tan Ma Taizhu. Immediately, his face turned pale with fear. Although he is the village bully of Huaishu village and does all sorts of evil in his daily life, he has never done anything like murder. Li Si's voice trembled and he said, Brother Eru, what? What should we do? I, I don't want to go to jail. How the hell do I know? Yang Er angrily cursed and then forced himself to calm down. At present, only the two of us know about this matter. As long as we don't disclose it, no one else will know. He made an analysis and then looked around. Suddenly, he saw the river below the mountain, and his eyes lit up. As long as we dispose of Matiezhu's body, no one will know about it. Li Si calmed down and asked, What should I do? Go to the white dragon pond at the foot of the mountain. In Huaishu village, besides the big locust tree, there is also a very famous place. That's white dragon pond. Legend has it that a long, long time ago, a white dragon failed to cross the tribulation and fell down, transforming into the white dragon pond. As for whether it is true, it is unknown. Li Si's eyes lit up and he said, that's a good idea. The white dragon pond is deep and bottomless. No one will know if the body is thrown inside. The two of them carried the body of Ma Taizhu and, taking advantage of the darkness, came to the top of Belongton and threw him down with force. With a thud, Ma Taizhu fell into the white dragon pool and then quickly sank. The two quickly left, cleaned up the traces of the incident, and then went back to their respective homes. Below the white dragon pond, the horse iron pillar kept falling downwards. The wound on the back of the head is constantly bleeding. Fresh blood dripped onto a huge skeleton at the bottom of the pond. Suddenly, white light appeared, and an illusory white dragon flew out of the skeleton, transforming into a stunning woman in white. She glanced at Ma Taizhu in front of her. Years have passed, and I have finally found a destined person. The ethereal voice echoed through the bottom of the pond, and the woman turned into a white light, sinking into Matiezhu's eyebrows. I am the white dragon immortal lord. Today, I bestow upon you a divine fate and hope that you will benefit the people in the future. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Give it a try. 
You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 Give it a try Ma Taiju felt like he had a dream. In his dream, he met a stunning fairy. The other party is known as the White Dragon Immortal Lord. Teach him various skills. What medical methods, mystical techniques, supernatural powers, immortal methods, and various mysterious and mysterious means. When Ma Taiju woke up, he found himself lying on a large blue stone. Looking up, there were several scattered stars hanging above the sky. In the distance, on the horizon, a crescent moon was blurry and almost disappearing. On the eastern horizon, you can already see fish belly white. Is this White Dragon Pond? Ma Taiju looked around and recognized the place. How could I be here? He thought back carefully and remembered what happened not long ago. Damn Yang Eru, wait for me. He remembers someone sneaking in from behind while chatting with Yang Eru. Although I don't know exactly what's going on, it's mostly related to Yang Eru. He quickly stood up, ready to leave here. If I don't go home all night, my sister will definitely worry. As a result, with a forceful force under his feet, his body instantly jumped out several meters away. Damn it, what's going on? Ma Taiju was startled and carefully sensed before realizing that his body was full of strength. Difficult. Is that dream all true? He was uncertain and his gaze turned to the white dragon pool behind him. He has also heard of the legend of Belongton. Is the fairy in the dream the legendary white dragon that failed to cross the tribulation? Ma Taiju had a guess in his heart, and then carefully examined the additional memories that had emerged in his mind. The more you look, the more frightened you become. At the end, his face showed ecstasy. Ha ha ha, Ma Taiju is going to develop now. With the memories in his mind, it will be difficult for him to develop in the future. After being happy, Ma Taiju's eyes showed a deep dot seated hatred. Lu Tianhe, Zhou Jing, wait for me. In no time, Ma Taizhu will go to the provincial capital to seek revenge from you. Now that he has inherited the legacy of the White Dragon Immortal, revenge is only a matter of time. By the way, there's also that bastard Yang Eru. Putting aside his excitement, he quickly ran towards home. Nowadays, he is as light as a swallow and his speed is several times faster than usual. It only took half an hour to arrive at my own home. Passing through the golden vegetable field, Ma Taiju finally saw his own house. A group of people gathered in front of the mud-tiled house. Zhang Fatsai, we are all neighbors. Can you please extend a little more time? In a few more days, we will definitely return the money to you. In the crowd, a middle-aged woman was praying to a middle-aged fat man with a big belly. The latter remained unmoved and said coldly. It is only natural for you to repay the debt. No matter what you say today, you must repay the money, or else you can use your daughter to offset the debt. The middle-aged woman's face changed and she said, What do you mean? The middle-aged chubby man chuckled and said, Sister, don't blame my brother for not giving you a chance. As long as you marry your daughter to my son, the 50,000 yuan you owe will be treated as a dowry. If it's not enough, I can make up for it. Anyway, your daughter will get married sooner or later. As neighbors of our two families, we promise not to mistreat your daughter when we get married. Upon hearing this, Ma Tiezhu's face immediately darkened. The middle-aged man's name is Zhang Fatsai. He does business in the town and his family is quite wealthy. But perhaps it was because he did too much unethical work, and his son Zhang Fugue was born with a slight intellectual disability. Is this guy who also wants to marry her sister? The villagers watching nearby also pointed and pointed, feeling that Zhang Fatsai was a bit excessive. Matsuelan is a famous beauty in Huishu village, but Zhang Fugue is a fool. It's impossible for two people to match. Zhang Fatsai's approach is simply a toad wanting to eat swan meat. Middle-aged woman Qin Wan pointed at Zhang Fatsai with trembling fingers and said, You. You can't imagine, Tsuelan can't marry your son. 
Zhang Fatsai also lost patience and said coldly, since that's the case, then repay the money. If you don't repay it, I will go to the court to sue you, and then let your old ma family add another prisoner through labor. You. Upon hearing about the prisoner through labor reform, Qin Wan's body trembled with anger, and a hint of panic flashed in her eyes. If things really develop like that. What face will their family have to establish themselves in the village in the future? Ma Jiangwo, who was holding crutches in both hands next to him, heard these words and his face turned pale with anger. He gritted his teeth and said, Zhang Fatsai, don't bully people too much. What's wrong with me bullying you? Zhang Fatsai looked proud and took out an IOU from his pocket. He opened it and pointed to it, saying, See, it's clearly written in black and white. If you don't repay the money when it's due, you can use your daughter to offset it. If you dare to act recklessly, I will go to the court and file a lawsuit with you. If there is another prisoner of labor reform in your ma family, let's see what kind of face you have to stay in Huaishu village in the future. Ma Jiangwo glanced at the promissory note and was immediately shocked and angry, saying, you added it yourself, you can't count on it. Zhang Fatsai sneered and said, there's your signature and fingerprint on it, why can't we make it count? To be honest with you, my wife's family has a relative who happens to work in the court. Let's say hello in advance and promise to let you sit down in prison. Qin Wan and Matsuelan's faces immediately turned pale. Bastard, you're bullying too much, I'll fight you. Ma Jiangwo's forehead was bulging with veins, waving his cane as he was about to hit Zhang Fatsai. You disabled thing, dare you fight me? Zhang Fatsai showed disdain and grabbed his cane, ready to teach Ma Jiangwo a lesson. Suddenly, a big hand grabbed the cane. At the same time, a cold voice came into his ears. Give it a try. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 It's time to calculate our accounts. You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 it's time to calculate our accounts Zhang Fatsai turned his head and saw a young man with a cold expression looking at him. Ma. Ma Taizhu. Zhang Fatsai was stunned for a second or two, his eyes showing uncertainty. Ma Tsuelan wept with joy. The villagers watching, as well as Ma Jianjun and Qin Wan, were also stunned as Ma Taizhu suddenly appeared. Ma Jianjun and his wife returned early this morning. As soon as they returned, Zhang Fatsai went to find them. Therefore, Matsuelan has not yet informed the two of the news of Ma Fugue's return. At this moment, when I first saw my son, I thought I was mistaken. The villagers were also surprised not to know that Ma Taizhu had returned. Iron Pillar, you. When did you come back? Qin Wan wept with joy, her voice carrying a strong surprise. Although Ma Jianjun did not speak, there was also an indescribable surprise on his face. Mom, I came back yesterday. Ma Taizhu casually explained, and then exerted force in his hand, causing Zhang Fatsai to stumble and almost fall, causing a dog to gnaw on the mud. Little rabbit, do you dare to fight me? Zhang Fatsai became furious and stabilized his figure before punching towards Ma Fugue. Ma Taizhu easily dodged and then kicked Zhang Fatsai out, causing him to stumble backwards and fall to the ground. Falling and grinning. Little rabbit, I must have ruined you today. He struggled up with his stomach in his hands, thinking that he must teach Ma Taizhu a lesson. Zhang Fatsai, do you dare to try another move? Believe it or not, I'll let you crawl out of here today. His eyes widened and a fierce expression appeared on his face. Not to mention, Zhang Fatsai was really scared. Although Ma Taizhu is not very old, he has served in prison before. It is said that it was because of fighting that they entered. As the saying goes, those who are horizontal are afraid of being stunned, while those who are stunned are afraid of not dying. A normal person is not afraid of being imprisoned. Watched by so many people next to him, Zhang Fatsai felt a bit embarrassed and immediately threatened fiercely, Ma Taizhu, it's only natural to owe money. 
If you don't pay back and still beat someone, do you have any tricks in your eyes? Believe it or not, I will go to the county tomorrow to sue you and make you sit down in prison. Ma Taizhu was not afraid at all and sneered, then you should go sue me. Let me see if you have such great skills, and let me sit down and wear them. You. Zhang Fatsai's face turned pale, but he didn't expect Ma Taizhu to not be able to make any progress. He naturally wouldn't easily sue, it's not so easy to file a lawsuit in this era. It's necessary to go through some back doors, they are all real gold and silver. It is not necessary unless absolutely necessary. Humph, I'm too lazy to argue with you, a prisoner of labor reform. He snorted and turned to look at Ma Jianjun, Ma Jianjun, since you don't want to marry your daughter to my son, then pay back the money. Even the principal and interest amount to 50,000 yuan. It must be paid off today, not even a penny less. Ma Jianjun's face showed a displeasure, and their family was all in poverty. Where are we going to get 50,000 yuan in this short period of time? Qin Wan and Ma Dongmei on the side looked as pale as earth, and for a moment they didn't know what to do. Zhang Fatsai sneered at this and wanted to see how many people were going to do. Suddenly, Ma Taizhu stepped forward and snatched the IOU from his hand. Zhang Fatsai's face changed and he cursed, Little rabbit, what are you doing? Pay me the IOU. He was afraid that Ma Taizhu would tear up the IOU. Ma Taizhu gave a cold smile and pointed to the promissory note, saying, Are you blind? Isn't there still three days left until the last repayment date? You can come back and pay you a small sum of 50,000 yuan. Zhang Fatsai was stunned for a moment, but he didn't expect Ma Taizhu to take advantage of this loophole. He immediately sneered. He he, Ma Taizhu, don't brag here. You probably don't know about your family's situation yet. The pot is almost boiling, where can you get 50,000 yuan in three days? Ma Taizhu threw the IOU back and said with a calm face, you don't need to worry about it anymore. Get out of here quickly, otherwise you'll be looking for teeth everywhere. Seeing his intention to take action, Zhang Fatsai was startled and quickly took the IOU, leaving behind a scene sentence before turning around and leaving. Little brat, I'll come back in three days. If you can't afford it then, don't blame me for being impolite. Ma Taizhu never cared about the threat from the other party, and now he has the inheritance of the white dragon immortal. Just Zhang Fatsai, he doesn't even take it seriously. 50,000 yuan is also a small matter. He believes that with his current abilities, he can easily get it. Seeing that there was not much interest left, a group of middle-aged women and daughter-in-law left one after another. Before leaving, there was a hint of anticipation on his face as he prepared to come and see if Ma Taizhu could really get 50,000 yuan in three days. Iron Pillar, my son, you have finally come back. Qin Wan rushed up and hugged Ma Taizhu, tears of joy in her eyes. After two years, my son finally returned home. Ma Taizhu's nose was also slightly sore, and he struggled to hold back his tears. His voice sincerely said, Mom, my son is unfilial and came back late. Don't worry, my son will never leave you again in the future. Compared to two years ago, my parents are much older. Obviously, I have suffered a lot in the past two years. Qin Wan wiped the hot tears from the corners of her eyes and smiled, saying, It's okay, just come back. Just as the two women were happy, Ma Jianjun suddenly said, All right, all right, let's talk about the old story later. Let's first think of a way to get that 50,000 yuan from somewhere. Upon hearing these words, Qin Wan and Ma Tsuelan's eyes suddenly darkened. In rural areas, many families save less than 50,000 yuan per year. Not to mention three days. Matsuelan hesitated for a moment and said, Mom and Dad, I'll go back to the county town to work tomorrow and see if I can borrow some money from the boss. The old couple's face changed when they heard this. Qin Wan quickly shook her head and said, No, what if your boss's son harasses you again? 
Upon hearing these words, Ma Taizhu quickly asked, Mom, what's bothering you? What's going on? Qin Wan glanced at her son and hesitated whether to say it or not. You should speak quickly. Ma Taizhu urged, but Qin Wan had no choice but to reveal the truth. Originally, for the past two years, Ma Tsuelan has been working at a restaurant in the county town. Due to her serious and responsible work, she was quickly promoted to the position of foreman. In a small place like Ba County, you can earn 5,000 yuan a month, which can be considered very good. But not long ago, the son of the restaurant owner accidentally met Matsuelan and saw that she was born beautiful, so he started pursuing her. Matsuelan heard from her colleagues in the restaurant that they were just playboys. I love playing with women's emotions the most. I refused without even thinking about it. But the other party didn't give up and harassed Matsuelan every day, sometimes even blocking her on her way to work at night. Finally, she threatened Matsuelan with her job. Matsuelan was very scared and didn't know what to do, so she took a leave and returned to her hometown, thinking of asking her parents for their opinions. After the old couple learned about it, they asked her to resign from her job, which was very harmful and feared that their daughter would be harmed as a result. After learning about it, Ma Taizhu immediately said, Sister, don't go to that restaurant. Just take good care of your parents at home, and I will take care of you from now on. Matsuelan was quite happy to hear this, but she sighed and said, Iron Pillar, life is not as easy as you said. How much money can you earn alone? Qin Wan also followed suit and said, Yes, Taizhu, don't daydream. If you want to support a family, you can't do it alone. We all need to work together. Ma Taizhu didn't argue with the two of them either, he just said, Mom, I won't say much about anything else. You'll know in three days. Then, he looked at Ma Jianjun and said, Dad, sit down next to me and I'll check your health. Ma Jianjun hesitated and said, What kind of body should I check? Are you not a doctor? Don't worry, sit down first. Ma Taizhu pulled Ma Jianjun to a nearby chair and sat down, carefully examining his body. After a thorough examination, he had a clear idea in his mind. Although Ma Jianjun has many health problems, none of them are fatal. With just a few pairs of medicine and a little adjustment, you can recover. The most troublesome thing is still the legs. The internal channels and blood vessels have been necrotic. If you want to treat them, you must use acupuncture and moxibustion, massage, and take medicine. In the inheritance given by the White Dragon Immortal, there is an ancient medical book called Medicine Classic, which records countless magical medical techniques. It is easy to cure Ma Jianjun's illness. But Ma Taizhu has no plans to treat it at this moment. As the saying goes, a clever woman cannot cook without rice. He currently has neither silver needles nor medicinal herbs, and there is no way to treat him. Qin Wan curiously said, Iron Pillar, do you see anything? Ma Taizhu nodded and explained the situation of Ma Jianjun. Qin Wan covered her mouth in surprise upon hearing this. Because what Ma Taizhu said is similar to what the hospital examined, and even more detailed. You you really know medical skills. Her face was full of disbelief. Although Ma Taizhu was admitted to a medical university, he only attended half a semester. How could it be possible to have medical skills? Ma Jianjun and Ma Tsuelan were also amazed, the latter curious and said, Taizhu, what's going on? Where did you learn medical skills from? Ma Taizhu casually said, It's like this. When I was in prison, I met a crazy old man who said he was some kind of great Xia divine doctor. Seeing that I had good qualifications, he took me as his disciple and taught me some medical skills. After listening, the three of them felt extremely surprised. There is no doubt about Ma Tiezhu's words. After all, the other party has indeed learned a lot of medical skills, and there is no need to deceive them. Great! Who dares to say that my iron pillar is not promising in the future? Qin Wan wept with joy, her face full of excitement and pride. 
Since learning that Ma Taizhu was imprisoned, many people in the village have been secretly chewing their tongues. I think Ma Taizhu's life is over. After coming out of prison, it's difficult to find a job. What future prospects can he have? As parents, how can one not feel uncomfortable hearing these words? Ma Jianjun also smiled and said to Qin Wan, Waner, I'm happy today. You go kill a chicken, let's celebrate well. This time, Qin Wan did not refuse with the same heartache as before, and happily went to kill the chicken. Ma Tsuelan quickly followed up and helped. After more than two years, the family once again had a reunion dinner. After finishing his meal, Ma Taizhu said to the others, I'll go around the mountains and see if I can find any precious medicinal herbs. Ma Tsuelan quickly reminded, Be careful, it's dangerous in the mountains. Yesterday, Ma Taizhu didn't come back. She was so anxious that she even went to the mountains to look around, but couldn't find anyone. Prepare to report to the police if no one is found this morning. Don't worry, sister, there won't be anything wrong. Ma Taizhu made an okay gesture and then left home with his basket and hoe on his back. He headed straight to the depths of Daba Mountain, and the area near the village had been visited by the villagers, so there could be no precious medicinal herbs. Not far away, suddenly came the sound of two people arguing ahead. Young Eru, you bastard, hurry up and get rid of me, otherwise I won't be polite. Hee hee, Widow Wang, it's sunny today and the environment here is also peaceful. Why don't we have a good time together? Ma Taizhu fixed his gaze and saw a man with a tiger back and a bare waist blocking a beautiful young woman at the bend of the mountain ahead. The man is none other than the village bully Yang Eru. That woman Ma Taizhu also knows. It's the pretty widow Wang Xiuyan from the village. When she married into Huaishu village back then, it caused quite a sensation because Wang Xiuyan was a famous beauty from ten miles and eight villages. Unfortunately, just a few days after getting married, my husband died in a car accident. Outsiders think she's a coward, and no one dares to marry her in these years. I have been guarding my widow all along, and I am also a hard-working person. When Ma Taizhu first saw Wang Xiuyan, he couldn't help but think about it. If only I could marry such a beautiful woman in the future. Yang Eru, get the hell out of me. Believe it or not, I castrated you. Wang Xiuyan's delicate body trembled with anger. Although she was a widow, she remained chaste and could not bear to be teased like this. Yang Eru chuckled and said, Widow Wang, stop pretending. Aren't you lonely and unbearable all these years? Today, my brother will come to help you. He rushed towards Wang Xiuyan as he spoke, causing her face to turn pale with fear. Seeing Ma Taizhu in the distance, his face immediately darkened and he sneered, Yang Eru, it's time to calculate our accounts. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Beating Village Bullies You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Beating Village Bullies, Yang Eru, You Have the Courage to Rape Women in Broad Daylight Just as Yang Eru was about to succeed, a shout of reprimand suddenly rang out, startling Yang Eru's whole body. He instinctively turned his head and saw Ma Taizhu walking with a sneer on his face. At first sight of Ma Taizhu, Yang Eru's face changed greatly in fear. Ghosts Wang Xiuyan's eyes lit up as Ma Taizhu suddenly appeared. Just like a divine army and a heavenly general. What woman doesn't yearn for heroes to save beauty? And the person who appeared was still a handsome guy like Ma Taizhu. In Wang Xiuyan's impression, Ma Taizhu was a somewhat shy and delicate young man. Later on, he was admitted to a provincial university and was a true pride of heaven. But later, for some unknown reason, he was imprisoned and his future was buried. Although there have been many rumors and gossip in the village, Wang Xiuyan's impression of Ma Taizhu still lingers in her early days. I think the other person is a good boy. She doesn't believe those rumors. Because she herself has a deep understanding of this. Over the years, she has been keeping herself clean. But there are still many people in the village chewing on her tongue behind her back. 
what was said was all negative. She believed that there must have been some unavoidable difficulties in the process of Matiezhu's imprisonment. Wang Xiuyan covered her red lips in surprise, knowing that she would not be bullied by Yang Eru now. Ma Taizhu sneered at Yang Eru, whose face was pale, Yang Eru, you have done all your bad things and have been perceived by the king of hell. Let me take your dog's life, young master. After experiencing the initial fear, Yang Eru quickly calmed down. Because he saw a shadow under Ma Tiezhu's body. How could ghosts have shadows? Combined with Ma Tiezhu's previous words, he quickly reacted and then cursed loudly. You Ma Taizhu, how dare you pretend to be a ghost to scare me? Look, if I don't beat you today, you'll cry and cry. He didn't have time to think about why Ma Taizhu didn't die. At this moment, he was holding a fire in his heart and just wanted to vent it immediately. Two consecutive good deeds were destroyed by Ma Taizhu. Who else can avoid getting angry? He strode towards Ma Taizhu and took out a swing stick from his waist. This was specially prepared by him after the last lesson. Die for me. He swung his swing stick and headed straight for Ma Tiezhu's head. A fierce and aggressive posture. Seeking death. A cold gleam flashed in Ma Tiezhu's eyes, and he dodged the swinging stick that was thrown down, lifting his leg and kicking it hard. Just kicked in Yang Eru's abdomen. His face twisted with pain, and he arched his waist and flew backwards. With a loud bang, it hit a large pine tree with a bowl, causing it to shake and needles to fall. After landing, a mouthful of blood spurted out, and his face looked incredulously at Ma Taizhu. How could you? Not far away, Wang Xiuyan also covered her red lips in surprise, with the tall and handsome figure ahead deeply imprinted in her beautiful eyes. After more than two years of absence, the childishness on Matiezhu's body has faded and now he has a more masculine aura. At this moment, Wang Xiuyan had a palpitating sensation. He he, Yang Eru, are you surprised? Ma Taizhu strode forward with a mocking smile on his face, speaking of which, it's still thanks to your blessings. Yang Eru looked bewildered, completely unable to understand what the other person meant by these words. Seeing Ma Taizhu constantly approaching, he said sternly and inwardly, Ma Taizhu, don't be arrogant. My elder brother works in the county town, and if you dare to touch me today, my elder brother will definitely not let you go. Wang Xiuyan's face slightly changed on the side. Yang Eru's elder brother is called Yang Dalong, and it is said that he eats very well in the county town. This is also why Yang Eru dares to be so arrogant in the village. Is that right? Ma Taizhu sneered coldly. I must try moving and see if your older brother can do anything with me. After the words fell, he lifted his foot and kicked hard. I only heard a click. Yang Eru's right knee cracked on the spot, and the intense pain twisted his face. His mouth let out a mournful scream. Ah! Shut up! Ma Taizhu scolded and a few big ear scrapers called him up. Yang Eru's mouth and nose were bleeding from the beating, and his teeth fell off. After a while, he finally stopped. Glancing coldly at Yang Eru's swollen cheeks, I'll let you go this time, and then let me hear about your wrongdoing in the village. The outcome will only be worse than today. Yang Eru glared at Ma Taizhu with a resentful gaze, but dared not say anything. Afraid of getting another big ear scrape. What are you looking at? Get out of here now. Ma Taizhu waved impatiently. Yang Eru dared not stop, struggled to get up, used a swing stick as a crutch, and limped away from here. Iron Pillar, when did you become so powerful? Wang Xiuyan immediately walked over, her eyes shining as she stared at Ma Taizhu. Staring at the beautiful young woman in front of him, Ma Taizhu couldn't take his gaze away. Today, Wang Xiuyan is wearing a tight black T-dot shirt with a slightly lower neckline, revealing a snow-dot white groove. The lower body is a tight pair of jeans, tightly wrapping the full buttocks, perfectly showcasing the overall figure. She belongs to that slightly plump figure, especially the majestic chest, 
as if her clothes were torn apart. It makes it a bit difficult to shift one's gaze. Seeing Ma Taizhu staring straight at her, Wang Xiuyan was not afraid. Ma Taizhu's eyes were straight, only feeling a white flower in front of him. Having been single for over twenty years, he hasn't even touched a girl's hand. How could he withstand such a test? When the nasal cavity heats up, a crimson nosebleed flows out. Wang Xiuyan was startled and said, Oh, Iron Pillar, what's wrong with you? Ma Taizhu quickly wiped off his nosebleed and shook his head, saying, No it's okay. He felt a bit embarrassed. It was his first time meeting after more than two years, and he actually made such a big fool of himself. Seeing Wang Xiuyan still wanting to ask, he quickly changed the topic and said, Sister Xiuyan, why are you running alone in the mountains? If I hadn't arrived just in time, you would have been bullied by that bastard Yang Eru. As soon as she mentioned this, Wang Xiuyan became angry and also felt a bit scared. I was originally here to move bamboo shoots in the mountains, but who knew that bastard Yang Eru was following behind? Fortunately, you arrived in time, otherwise I would have been bullied by that bastard. That bastard probably has been plotting for a long time, Ma Taizhu speculated and continued to advise, Sister Xiuyan, try not to be alone in the future, so as not to give opportunities for those with intentions. I will pay attention in the future, Wang Xiuyan nodded and curiously said, when did you come back? Why are you running alone in the mountains? I just came back yesterday, explained Ma Taizhu. I came to the mountains to dig medicinal herbs and want to take them to the county town to sell for money. Wang Xiuyan exclaimed and then suggested, why don't we come together? Ma Taizhu readily replied, Of course you can. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Treatment You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Treatment Subsequently, the two entered the depths of Daba Mountain together. Talking and laughing along the way, holding on to the family routine. For some reason, when facing Ma Taizhu, Wang Xiuyan felt very relaxed. This man, who is six or seven years younger than himself, not only looks handsome, but also has a feeling of wanting her to rely on him. At the end of the conversation, Wang Xiuyan couldn't help but spit out bitterness at Ma Taizhu. Talking about her hardships over the years. Because the man died just a few days after getting married. With the introduction of other people to her later on, various problems will also arise. After several attempts, others thought she was cheating, and no one dared to introduce her to anyone else afterwards. The sister dot in dot law of her mother's family is a sharp and sarcastic person who always likes to squeeze people, and she doesn't want to go back. Going to the city to work, because I only have a primary school education, I can only do some hard work. Once, I almost got scammed. Since then, Wang Xiuyan has been hesitant to go out and has been staying in the countryside. It's very frustrating not having a man at home. Not only are there many heavy tasks that cannot be done, but we also need to guard against hooligans like Yang Eru. Seeing Wang Xiuyan's sad expression on her face, Ma Tiezhu's heart was somewhat touched. Before, he always felt unlucky and encountered a bunch of bad things. After listening to Wang Xiuyan's experience at this moment, he suddenly woke up. In fact, there are many people in this world who are not easy. Sister Xiuyan, I will be in the village from now on. You can tell me anything you need. Ma Tiezhu's voice was sincere, and a bright smile appeared on his face. Wang Xiuyan was warmed by the sunny smile of the young man. Okay, she nodded vigorously and gave a playful smile. That's settled. If my sister dot in dot law has anything to do, she'll come to you in the future. Wang Xiuyan was already very beautiful, but now she smiles even more beautifully. Like the blooming flowers. Ma Tiezhu's eyes straightened slightly as he instinctively said, Sister Xiuyan, you are so beautiful. Wang Xiuyan's pretty face turned slightly red, and she couldn't bear the naked gaze of the young man. She quickly changed the topic and said, Tai Zhu, look. The small river over there is covered with green bamboo, there must be many bamboo shoots. Let's go over and take a look. 
After she finished speaking, she quickly ran towards the small river ahead. Ma Taizhu also realized that he had lost his composure, touched his nose, and quickly followed suit. Sister Xiu Yan, please slow down. Just as he finished speaking, a sudden cry of surprise came from ahead. Upon closer inspection, Wang Xiuyan fell to the ground with a painful expression on her face. Sister Xiuyan. Ma Tiezhu's face changed and he immediately rushed forward. As he approached, he asked with a worried expression, Sister Xiuyan, what's wrong with you? Wang Xiuyan's forehead was sweating, and her face was full of fear as she said, I. I feel like I've been bitten by a snake. Ma Taizhu was surprised at the words and said, Did you see clearly what snake it was? If it's an ordinary snake, it hurts at most once when bitten. But if it's a venomous snake, it's dangerous. Okay. It seems like a five-legged snake. There was a hint of fear in Wang Xiuyan's voice. The five-legged snake is a highly toxic snake. If not rescued in a timely manner after being bitten, it can be life.threatening. Ma Taizhu was also taken aback at the words and quickly asked, Sister Xiuyan, where was the bite? Let me see quickly. We need to quickly suck out the venom, otherwise it will be very dangerous. At. Wang Xiuyan's face turned red with a brush, and she hesitated for a long time without feeling embarrassed to say anything. Ma Taizhu was a bit anxious and said, Sister-in-law, you should speak quickly. Wang Xiuyan pointed to the root of her right thigh and said in a mosquito-like voice, Here. Here. After speaking, her whole face had turned red. Ma Taizhu opened his mouth in surprise and finally understood why Wang Xiuyan was embarrassed to say it. That damn snake, what's wrong with biting that place? But for some reason, there was an inexplicable excitement deep in his heart. Sister-in-law, what's going on? We need to quickly suck out the venom, otherwise it will be very dangerous over time. But. Wang Xiuyan felt a bit embarrassed, the area where she was bitten was too private. She's not a city girl, she can't be so open-dot-minded. Sister-in-law, dragging on any longer is highly likely to result in disability. Ma Taizhu urged, he was really a bit anxious. If it was really a five-legged snake bite, then I can't be joking. Missing the best rescue time can lead to major problems. Upon hearing these words, Wang Xiuyan's face turned pale with fear. Well. Well then. She nodded, then unbuttoned and slowly took off her jeans. Ma Taizhu's breathing suddenly became rapid. Wang Xiuyan was actually wearing black lace inside, tightly wrapping her plump buttocks. Paired with those slender and fair legs, it has a great visual impact. Ma Taizhu is just a pure virgin, how could he withstand such a test? The blood in the body is restless, the body begins to heat up, and thoughts keep surging in the heart. I wish I could transform into a jackal and wolf, risking everything to defeat the beautiful young woman in front of me. Wang Xiuyan was somewhat frightened by Ma Tiezhu's gaze and couldn't help but shout, Iron. Iron Pillar. Ma Taizhu immediately regained his senses, quickly choked off the unrealistic thoughts in his heart, and then looked at Wang Xiuyan's right thigh. Sure enough, I saw two tooth marks there. Leaving black blood outside, the skin around the wound has turned pitch black. Sister-in-law, I have offended you. After Ma Taizhu finished speaking, he immediately laid down his head, bit the wound, and sucked in the poisonous blood inside with force. Wang Xiuyan felt two hot sniffles coming from her thighs, instantly blushing with embarrassment on her pretty face. This is the first time a man has had such intimate contact with her. Don't be fooled by her marriage, she is actually still a beautiful girl. She met her deceased husband on a blind date. I only met a few times before getting married. It was supposed to be completed on the night of our wedding. But at that time, aunt came. Within two days, my husband died in a car accident. Facing this situation for the first time, she felt so ashamed that she wished she could find a crack in the ground to crawl in. After about a minute, 
Ma Taiju finally sucked all the poisonous blood and looked up and said, Sister-in-law, it's already healed. He just realized that Wang Xiuyan's pretty face had already turned red like blood. That shy appearance is even more heart-pounding. Wang Xiuyan regained her senses and quickly began to pull up her pants. But he was stopped by Ma Taiju. Wait a minute. Wang Xiuyan looked puzzled. Sister-in-law, some venom has already invaded the blood vessels and meridians. To completely eradicate it, you still need to massage and massage. Ma Taiju pointed to some black flesh and blood around the wound. Wang Xiuyan didn't understand either, so she nodded after hearing the words. Well. That's okay. Ma Taiju immediately gave a massage to the Twina. Getting a slippery texture made him feel a bit confused. He finally understood why men like long legs. Ma Taiju quickly regained his thoughts and gave a serious massage. He did not use ordinary techniques, but a technique recorded in the classic of medicine. It is very effective in promoting blood circulation and removing impurities from blood vessels and meridians. At first, Wang Xiuyan felt a bit embarrassed. But gradually, her beautiful eyes narrowed slightly, and a look of enjoyment appeared on her face. Because Ma Tiezhu's massage and massage make people feel very comfortable. After more than ten minutes of full massage, Ma Taiju finally stopped. Sister-in-law, it's okay. Is it done so quickly? Wang Xiuyan instinctively said, and as soon as she finished speaking, her pretty face blushed again. Unconsciously, he spoke his heart out. Ma Taiju chuckled and said, Sister-in-law, if you're willing, I can continue. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Polygonum Multiflorum You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Polygonum Multiflorum, No No, No Wang Xiuyan quickly waved her hand, then quickly put on her pants and stood up. Iron Pillar, thank you just now. Thank you. Ma Taizhu waved his hand and said, It's a small matter, you don't need to thank me. Wang Xiuyan was curious and said, Taizhu, where did you learn your massage technique just now? It looks so impressive. Ma Taizhu casually said, I learned it when I was in college. It's a massage technique that specializes in promoting blood circulation and removing blood stasis. Wang Xiuyan let out a sigh and then asked, Taizhu, they all say you hit someone in college before going to jail. I don't feel like you're that kind of person. Can you tell your sister dot in dot law what's going on? Of course you can. Ma Taizhu did not conceal anything and gave a rough overview of what happened back then. After listening, Wang Xiuyan's face was filled with indignation. How could there be such a despicable woman in this world? It's like a pig or a dog. And that Lu family, it's just too bad. One day they will suffer retribution. She kept cursing and defending Ma Taizhu. Finally, he comforted and said, Taizhu, the matter has already passed. Don't dwell on it either. In the future, earn some money to marry a wife and live a good life. Ma Taizhu nodded and then grinned, Sister-in-law, you're single, and I'm also single. Why don't we spend time together? Wang Xiuyan's pretty face blushed slightly, and upon hearing these words, she instinctively felt a hint of anticipation in her heart. But he said with his mouth, You think so beautifully. I need to find someone I can rely on in the future, so I won't look for a little man like you. Ma Taizhu joked, Sister-in-law, you can't speak recklessly. You haven't even tried, how do you know I'm young? Wang Xiuyan's pretty face couldn't help but blush slightly. She let out a yelp and quickly walked towards the small river ahead. After moving a pile of bamboo shoots, the two continued to move forward, searching for valuable medicinal herbs. But precious medicinal herbs, which is so easy to find. But Ma Taizhu is not panicked. In the classic of medicine, there are descriptions of various medicinal herbs. There are detailed records and descriptions of both medicinal value and annual growth environment. Ma Taizhu has been observing the surrounding mountain terrain all the way. 
As he passed by a valley, his eyes twitched and he felt that the terrain ahead was very similar to the one described in the medicinal scripture, which featured Polygonum multiflorum. Wang Xiuyan exclaimed curiously, Iron Pillar, what's wrong? Ma Taizhu didn't hide anything and said his guess. Wang Xiuyan was greatly surprised upon hearing this, with a questioning expression on her face. Iron Pillar, it's really fake. What you're saying is too mysterious, isn't it? Ma Taizhu chuckled and said, How about we make a bet? Wang Xiuyan subconsciously asked, How do you bet? Ma Taizhu said, If you find rare medicinal herbs in the valley later, give me a kiss. Wang Xiuyan blushed and asked in response, What if we can't find it? Ma Taizhu said shamelessly, Then I'll give you a kiss. Get lost. Wang Xiuyan rolled her eyes and didn't want to pay attention to the former. Subsequently, the two entered the valley. Ma Taizhu carefully searched according to the description in the classic of medicine. After nearly two hours of searching, he finally found the trace of Polygonum multiflorum. It grows in a crevice in a stone. The outside is full of thorns and shrubs. It is almost impossible to find it without looking for the terrain and topography of the mountains. Ma Taizhu used a firewood knife to split open the thorny shrubs outside. Then start digging with a shovel and hoe. It took more than half an hour to successfully dig out Polygonum multiflorum. To Ma Taizhu's surprise, it was the twin Polygonum multiflorum. Two Polygonum multiflorum plants, about the size of an adult's forearm, with roots, are over one meter long. A strong medicinal aroma fills the nose. Ma Taizhu observed and roughly guessed the year of Polygonum multiflorum in his hand. At least 100 years or more. If taken to the city for sale, it would be worth at least tens of thousands of yuan. If you encounter someone who is discerning, you may be able to sell it for over 100,000 to 200,000 yuan. Wang Xiuyan covered her mouth in surprise and said, Taizhu, you're too powerful. You actually found it. That's right, don't even see who I am. Ma Taizhu looked proud and then asked with a smile, Sister-in-law, should we fulfill the bet? Pooh, I didn't bet with you. Wang Xiuyan immediately turned her head and did not admit to the gambling agreement. Ma Taizhu didn't insist either. He carefully placed the polygonum multiflorum and then looked at the sky. Sister-in-law, the sun is almost setting. Let's go back today. With this polygonum multiflorum, it's enough to repay the debt. Okay. Wang Xiuyan nodded. After more than an hour, the two returned to the village. Sister-in-law, see you later. Ma Taizhu bid farewell to Wang Xiuyan and then headed straight home with a backpack on his back. I quickly returned home. When Ma Taizhu found out that he had dug 200-year-old polygonum multiflorum plants, Ma Jiangwo and his companions were all overjoyed. Qin Wan curiously said, Iron Pillar, should this polygonum multiflorum over a hundred years old be very valuable? Ma Jiangwo said on the side, that's for sure. I estimate it's worth one or two thousand. Qin Wan was startled and said, oh, it's so valuable. She quickly and cautiously put down the polygonum multiflorum in her hand, afraid of damaging it. Matsuelan also covered her mouth in surprise. Ma Taizhu smiled and said, Dad, it's not just one or two thousand yuan. This one plant needs to be worth more than fifty thousand yuan, let alone two. Ma Taizhu has at least attended medical university for half a semester and has a rough understanding of the prices of medicinal herbs. Upon hearing the astronomical number of 50,000, the whole family was shocked and their mouths grew wide. Matsuelan was pleasantly surprised and said, That's great. Now we have money to give back to Zhang Fatsai. Qin Wan and Ma Jiangwo were also delighted. If it weren't for their desperate situation, how would they have gone to borrow high interest loans from Zhang Fatsai? Now that there is hope to repay the money, the whole family is happy. More importantly, they saw hope in Ma Taizhu. As parents, who doesn't want their children to have success? Wanner, go kill the last old hen too. 
Let's celebrate tonight. Ma Jiangwo proposed. Qin Wan gave the former a blank glance and couldn't help but say, what celebration? I think it's about your craving. Ma Jiangwo couldn't help but blush at his old face. Ma Taizhu quickly said, Mom, it's okay. When I go to the county tomorrow and sell the money, I'll buy him hundreds of chicken seedlings and come back. From now on, our family will eat chicken every day. Okay, okay, listen to you. Qin Wan smiled and nodded, then went to the kitchen to cook. Ma Tsuelan also followed up. After dinner, Ma Jiangwo and the three of them rested early. Ma Taizhu was sleepless. After obtaining the inheritance of the White Dragon Immortal Lord, his entire spirit and spirit were very strong. Even though he had been running around in the mountains all day today, he did not feel any fatigue. Leaving home, I arrived at the large locust tree next to me. Sitting cross-legged, he began practicing the soul-swallowing technique. The soul-swallowing technique is a technique practiced by the White Dragon Immortal. It is a very powerful martial art. Can devour any energy for cultivation. To achieve great success, one can also devour the bloodlines of various powerful creatures to enhance their own bloodline power. The White Dragon Immortal once relied on this technique to devour countless great demons with dragon bloodline, and finally successfully evolved the true dragon bloodline. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Thousand Medicine Pavilion You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8000 Medicine Pavilion Ma Taizhu sat cross-legged under the big locust tree, practicing according to the technique of swallowing spirits. Absorb the thin spiritual energy between heaven and earth, as well as the scattered moonlight. There was nothing to say overnight. The next morning, Ma Taizhu opened his eyes and felt refreshed. He stood up and punched a set of punches. Then he returned home. My parents have already gotten up and are busy making breakfast. After having breakfast, he picked up two polygonum multiflorum plants and left home. Mom and Dad, I went to the county town. The sound of the old couple's admonitions came from behind. Pay attention to safety on the road. Huaishu village is over 50 kilometers away from the county town. If you want to go to the county town, you have to take a ride on the county road from the county town to the town. Huaishu village only has one rough road connected. There are hardly any cars coming on weekdays. Due to extremely inconvenient transportation, the development of Huaishu village is extremely backward. Ma Taizhu walked over five kilometers on a dirt road before reaching the county road. After waiting for a while, I finally got on a minibus specifically designed to run from town to county town. It took over an hour to arrive at the county town. Ma Taizhu is very familiar with the county town, after all, high school is in the county town. He carried a backpack containing polygonum multiflorum and inquired in the county town before arriving at a traditional Chinese medicine shop called Qianyao Gu. It is the largest traditional Chinese medicine shop in the county, with six or seven branches, reportedly containing all kinds of Chinese medicinal materials. Ma Taizhu arrived at a nearby branch and took a look at the decoration. It can be called luxurious. At first glance, it is evident that the boss behind this thousand medicine pavilion is very wealthy. Entering the store, a strong smell of traditional Chinese medicine rushed in. Ma Taizhu scanned around and found that there were not many customers inside. It's normal to think so. In the current era, there are not many people who still believe in traditional Chinese medicine. Sir, what do you need? A female shop assistant approached politely and asked, but did not object to Ma Taizhu's peasant attire. Ma Taizhu said truthfully, I'm here to sell medicinal herbs. As he spoke, he opened his backpack behind him and revealed the polygonum multiflorum inside. I have two polygonum multiflorum plants over a hundred years old here. Do you have them here? The female salesperson glanced at her and politely said, Sir, please wait here for a moment. I need to go and consult with the store manager. She pointed to the seat next to her and then turned to go inside the pharmacy. 
In no time, he walked over with a middle-aged man. Store manager, this is the gentleman. The shop assistant pointed at Ma Taizhu and said to the middle-aged man. Tang Xiaojun looked up and down at Ma Taizhu, and a hint of disgust flashed deep in his eyes. He asked condescendingly, I heard you're selling polygonum multiflorum. Take it out and show it to me. Ma Taizhu was somewhat dissatisfied with the former's attitude, but he still opened his backpack and revealed the polygonum multiflorum inside. In an instant, a scent of medicine filled the nose. Tang Xiaojun's eyes narrowed slightly and he said calmly, Show me some. Ma Taizhu handed the backpack over. Tang Xiaojun took the backpack and took out the two polygonum multiflorum plants inside, placing them in his hand for careful observation. With his eyesight, he could tell at a glance that the two polygonum multiflorum plants in front of him were pure wild. This is the first time he has seen such a large wild polygonum multiflorum. Several customers in the store also looked over. A surprised expression appeared in his eyes. They had never seen such a large polygonum multiflorum before. Ma Taizhu timely introduced, my two polygonum multiflorum plants are pure wild and very fresh. I just dug them up in the mountains yesterday. Tang Xiaojun put down the polygonum multiflorum and said to Ma Taizhu with a stern face, Young brother, we are all insiders. Don't talk nonsense here. You are clearly an artificially planted polygonum multiflorum. How could pure wild ones grow so big? Several customers in the store nodded to themselves upon hearing this. Indeed, in the current era, we want to dig up such a large wild polygonum multiflorum. It's almost impossible. Ma Tiezhu's face darkened slightly, but before he could speak, he heard Tang Xiaojun say it again. Well, I don't think it's easy for you either. I'll give you 5,000 yuan to buy it, just consider it a good deed. Upon hearing these words, Ma Taizhu almost laughed in anger. 5,000 yuan, how about sending beggars? He snatched the backpack and said coldly, Thank you for your kindness, I don't need it. He had already noticed that the guy in front of him was clearly from the countryside and thought he had little knowledge. Prepare to deceive him and buy polygonum multiflorum at the lowest price. Tang Xiaojun's face darkened and he smiled without saying, Little brother, 5,000 yuan is already very high. If you go somewhere else, they can give you a maximum of 3 or 4,000 yuan. Ma Taizhu chuckled, too lazy to say more, and turned to plan to leave. Tang Xiaojun became a bit anxious and said again, Little brother, be content with yourself. Being too greedy will lead to losses. Seeing Ma Tiezhu's head not turning back, he said again, Then you can tell me the price. Ma Taizhu stopped, turned around, and raised a finger. Tang Xiaojun's face looked a bit unpleasant and gritted his teeth, saying, Okay, ten thousand is ten thousand. Let's pay and deliver the goods together. Ma Taizhu couldn't help but say, Who told you ten thousand? I said one zero 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 zero. One zero 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 zero. Tang Xiaojun's expression was shocked, thinking that he had heard the wrong thing. After realizing it, he immediately sneered and said, I mean country bumpkin, you probably haven't seen money before. Still one zero 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 zero, do you know how much one zero 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 is? Not to mention that the polygonum multiflorum in your hand is only artificially planted, even if it is truly wild, it cannot be worth 100,000 yuan. Ma Taizhu chuckled, too lazy to talk anymore, and turned around to leave quickly. Tang Xiaojun's face suddenly became extremely gloomy. He thought Ma Taizhu was just a mud-legged child from the countryside and unlikely to know the value of wild polygonum multiflorum. Thinking of collecting it at the cost of labor and showwu, and then making a profit, it backfired. Humph, country bumpkin, if you can sell for 100,000 today, I'll flip the name over. He snorted coldly, not even thinking that the polygonum multiflorum in Yi Xiaofan's hand could sell for 100,000 yuan. Based on his experience, those two polygonum multiflorum plants are worth only 112,000 yuan if they break through the sky. 
The key is that others also need to make money when buying. It's impossible for anyone to be foolish enough to spend so much money to buy two polygonum multiflorum plants. After leaving the Thousand Medicine Pavilion, Ma Taizhu headed towards the medicinal herb market in the south of the city. I thought the Qianyao Pavilion store was very secure, but to my surprise, the store bullied customers. Now we can only try our luck at the herbal medicine market. Just as he was feeling a bit upset, he suddenly heard bursts of exclamation coming from the nearby park. Looking closely, I saw a group of people gathered together. It seems that something has happened. He immediately rushed over, squeezed into the crowd, and saw an old man lying on the ground. Curled up, hands covering the chest, pale and bloodless. It looks like it's sick. Beside the old man, a tall and beautiful woman was making a phone call to contact an ambulance, her beautiful eyes filled with anxiety. Ma Taizhu can tell at a glance that the elderly person has a heart attack, and if not treated in time, there is a risk of life. Threatening consequences. This place is a few kilometers away from the county hospital, and there are many cars in the county town, so it will take at least 10 to 20 minutes to come here. At that time, it was probably too late. Let me take a look. He pushed away the crowd and strode towards the old man. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Thousand Medicine Pavilion Boss You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Thousand Medicine Pavilion Boss Xiao Luoli, who was on the phone, looked curiously and said, Are you? I am a doctor, can you help me take a look? Ma Taizhu casually said a sentence, then turned the old man over and began to rescue him. At this moment, the old man's heart suddenly stopped. Ma Taizhu used the techniques recorded in the classic of medicine to press and massage the old man's chest, helping him perform cardiac resuscitation. Under his emergency treatment, the old man's suddenly stopped heart began to beat again. Breathing also gradually calms down. After a while, it returned to normal. A divine doctor. The onlookers couldn't help but sigh when they saw this scene. Shocked by Ma Taizhu's medical skills. Xiao Luoli was also shocked, not expecting Ma Taizhu, who seemed to be young, to be so skilled in medicine. Ma Taizhu helped the old man sit up and said to Xiao Luoli, All right, it's already okay. Thank you. Thank you. After Xiao Luoli regained her senses, she quickly thanked her. Don't worry, it's just a simple matter. Ma Taizhu waved his hand, only then did he have time to scrutinize the beautiful woman in front of him. A woman is about 20.5 years old, with a sweet face, a curvy figure, and a pair of slender and straight legs. Wearing a set of sportswear, exuding a youthful and lively aura from top to bottom. The woman in front of me is no worse than those female celebrities in TV dramas. Ma Taizhu did not expect such a beautiful woman to exist in a small place like Ba County. Xiao Luoli extended her delicate jade hand and smiled, saying, Sir, meet me. My name is Xiao Luoli. Ma Taizhu quickly reached out and shook hands with the other person, My name is Ma Taizhu. Getting a warm and smooth texture made him reluctant to let go. At this moment, the old man also spoke up and said, Little brother, thank you for saving my life. If you have any needs, feel free to speak up. If the old man can help, he will definitely not hesitate. Ma Taizhu was about to shake his head and refuse, when suddenly he thought of something and felt a bit embarrassed, saying, Sir, I really have something I want to ask for your help with here. The two people in front of me were dressed exceptionally, and at first glance they were not ordinary people. Their friends and relatives may need to communicate with Shouwu. The old man laughed and said, Little brother, please speak. Ma Taizhu took off his backpack and opened the exposed polygonum multiflorum inside. I have two wild polygonum multiflorum plants over a hundred years old here, and I would like Mr. Lao to help introduce a buyer. The old man looked at the polygonum multiflorum in his backpack, carefully examined it, and confirmed that it was indeed wild polygonum multiflorum. He immediately smiled and said, so it's just a small matter, no problem. 
he thought Ma Tai Zhu would take this opportunity to make some excessive demands. I couldn't help but look up at Ma Tai Zhu a bit. Xiao Luoli next to her immediately said, Grandpa Wang, this is simple. Just call Ling Long and let her know. The old man nodded and said, Then I'll trouble you, girl. Xiao Luoli immediately took out his phone to make a call, and after a moment, hung up the phone and said to Ma Tai Zhu. I have a friend who runs a medicinal herb shop, and I have already said hello. Just take the polygonum multiflorum over there. Then, he mentioned the name and address of the medicinal herb shop. Upon hearing that it was the Thousand Medicine Pavilion, Ma Tai Zhu immediately shook his head. No, that Thousand Medicine Pavilion store is a big bully, I wouldn't sell it to them. Xiao Luoli was taken aback for a moment and smiled, saying, Mr. Ma, do you have any misunderstandings? The Thousand Medicine Pavilion is owned by my friend and has always had a good reputation in the county. There will never be such a thing as a store bullying customers. That's hard to say. Ma Taizhu pursed his lips and gave a rough overview of what had happened recently. Seeing what he said about having a nose and eyes, Xiao Luoli couldn't help but suspect. Immediately call that friend again to inquire about the situation. After a moment, he hung up the phone and said, Mr. Ma, I have already told my friend that she wants you to go to the store just now and she will personally handle it. Ma Taizhu nodded and said, Okay, I'll go over and take a look. At that moment, the ambulance finally arrived. Xiao Luoli took out a special business card from the phone case and handed it to Ma Tai Zhu, saying, Mr. Ma, this is my business card. If you need anything in the future, you can contact me. Ma Tai Zhu took it and glanced at it. It says Ba Shan Restaurant and Xiao Luoli's contact information. He casually put his business card into his pocket, bid farewell to the two, and left with his backpack on his back. Xiao Luoli took the old man to the ambulance and prepared to go to the hospital for further examination. Shortly thereafter, Ma Tai Zhu returned to the Thousand Medicine Pavilion. As soon as I entered the store, several salespeople inside looked over. After seeing Ma Tai Zhu, everyone's expressions were somewhat strange. The female shop assistant immediately went to the lounge to invite the store manager. In an instant, Tang Xiaojun walked out from behind. After seeing Ma Tai Zhu, he sneered and said, Hee hee, mud legs, aren't you very dragging? Why are you running back again? Ma Tai Zhu glanced at him, too lazy to pay attention. Tang Xiaojun thought he had nothing to say and immediately pretended to be a kind dot hearted person. Forget it, it's not easy for you to run over from the mountains just because you're just a muddy person. I'll just buy it for you for 5,000 yuan. Judging from his expression and posture, it feels like he has suffered a great loss. Ma Tai Zhu was left speechless. This is the first time he has seen such a shameless person. What's that? Don't think about 5,000 yuan. If you want to buy it, pay 100,000 yuan. It's not even possible to lose a penny. Upon hearing these words, Tang Xiaojun was immediately exploded. Villager, did you come here to find fault? I still owe you 100,000 yuan. Did I sell you for 100,000 yuan? Sell me 5,000 yuan for those who are knowledgeable, otherwise I won't let you leave the county town. Do you believe it? Ma Taizhu raised his eyes and said, so you're threatening me. Tang Xiaojun sneered, rural bumpkin, what's wrong with threatening you? I don't want to inquire about the background of the Thousand Medicine Pavilion. If you dare to cause trouble here, I think you think your life is too long. Just as he finished speaking, a cold reprimand suddenly came from outside the hall. I think you think your life is too long. Everyone inside the store was taken aback and looked out together. Tang Xiaojun was furious and was about to start scolding. But after seeing the person clearly, he was so scared that he almost collapsed on the spot. The person who came is three graceful figures. The speaker was the woman in the middle dressed in a white dress. He is in his early twenties, with a stunning appearance and a tall and graceful figure. A cold and noble aura permeated throughout. Behind her, 
followed by two beautiful shadows, one black and one white. The two women look almost the same, they should be twins. Like the woman in white, the two women also exuded a cold aura of being kept away from strangers. Ma Tiezhu's eyes showed a stunning expression. At the same time, there is also shock. What is the situation today? Suddenly, I met four peerless beauties, who were all top-notch in terms of figure, face, and temperament. Tang Xiaojun immediately welcomed him with a flattering expression on his face and said, Master, why did you come? End of this chapter Chapter 10 Obstruction and Robbery You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Obstruction and Robbery Qianlinglong snorted coldly, If I don't come again, you will ruin the reputation of Qianyao Pavilion. Tang Xiaojun's face changed and he asked cautiously, Master, what do you mean by this? Qian Linglong didn't even look at him and walked straight towards Ma Taizhu, followed closely by two beautiful shadows, one black and one white. Are you selling polygonum multiflorum? Ma Taizhu nodded and stood up, handing over his backpack. The woman in black reached out to take it, opened her backpack, and took out the polygonum multiflorum. After carefully examining it for a moment, she respectfully said to Qian Linglong, Miss, it's polygonum multiflorum that has been around for over a hundred years. Qianlinglong nodded lightly and said to Ma Taizhu, the previous incident was with my Qianyao pavilion. I'm not familiar with people, so I'm sorry. How about I buy these two polygonum multiflorum plants for 150,000 yuan? Upon hearing such a high price, Ma Taizhu's eyes lit up and he quickly nodded, no problem. Upon seeing this scene, Tang Xiaojun, not far away, let out a thud in his heart, knowing that something was not going well. He never expected that the muddy leg in front of him would actually know their boss. Bai Ji, please pay this gentleman the money. Qian Linglong instructed another woman in white, then turned to look at Tang Xiaojun and said calmly, go to the finance department to settle your salary. You don't need to come tomorrow. Tang Xiaojun's face changed greatly and he quickly begged for mercy, saying, Master, I was wrong. Please give me another chance. Qianlinglong's voice was cold and emotionless, and she said, Don't let me say it again. Tang Xiaojun trembled all over and dared not say more. He is very clear that his boss has an amazing background, and it is not something he can offend. Beauty, thank you. After receiving a huge sum of 150,000 yuan, Ma Taizhu was overjoyed and thanked Qian Linglong before leaving with a backpack of cash. Bai Ji originally intended to transfer money to him, but unfortunately, Ma Taizhu had just come out of prison and had not had time to buy a phone. I had no choice but to pay in cash. Before taking a few steps, Ma Taizhu seemed to have thought of something before turning back and asking Qian Linglong, by the way, do you have a silver needle here? Qian Linglong's beautiful eyes scrutinized Ma Taizhu and said, Why do you need a silver needle? Is it difficult? Do you know how to use medical skills? Ma Taizhu smiled humbly and said, I know a little bit. A hint of surprise flashed in Qian Linglong's beautiful eyes. Without her command, the female clerk beside her had already walked over with a box of silver needles. Ma Taizhu took it and asked, How much is it? Qian Linglong waved her hand and said, I'll give it to you. Ma Taizhu was taken aback for a moment, then gratefully said, Beauty, thank you very much. After he finished speaking, he turned around and walked towards the outside of the shop, without noticing the hint of resentment that flashed deep in Tang Xiaojuan's eyes as he passed by. Qian Linglong also left here with her two daughters. After leaving Qianyao Pavilion, Ma Taizhu went to a large shopping mall and first bought four mobile phones. He is planning to give each of his parents and sister a part. Yesterday, he noticed that his parents were using the oldest flip phones. Sister's phone screen is also broken and looks very old. He knew that all of this was because his family was too poor. Now that he has earned money, he naturally cannot be stingy. For mobile phones cost nearly 20,000 yuan. There are still over 130,000 left. 
Later, Ma Taizhu bought some other gifts for his family in the mall. After leaving the mall, he plans to stroll around the market again, buy some chicken, duck, fish, and meat, and then go back. Passing through a remote section of the road, I was stopped by several handsome men in the crowd. The leader is a young man with a scarred face. He sneered and said, Kid, what's in your bag? Bring it over and take a look. He kept glancing at the backpack behind Ma Taizhu, his eyes filled with greed. Ma Taizhu's eyes narrowed. How could the guys across from him know that his backpack was filled with money? Is it that woman who wants to eat black? Or in an instant, he thought of many possibilities. I'm in a good mood today and don't want to hit anyone. I advise you to get out of here quickly to avoid suffering from physical harm. He gave a faint advice and didn't want to take action. Oh, are you still quite crazy, kid? A young man with red hair had a teasing look in his eyes. He took out a spring knife from his pocket and played with it in his hand. Kid, hand over the valuable things on your body, and then kneel down and call us grandpa a few times, and you can roll away, he said, otherwise, the brothers don't mind letting you bleed. The other few also had a mocking expression on their faces, as if they had taken the lead. Since you're looking for a fight, I'll do it for you. Ma Taizhu put down the packaging bag in his hand and reached out to hook his fingers at several people. Come on, let me see. How capable are you of learning how to rob? Upon hearing these words, the five people across the street immediately became angry. Grass mud horse, this little boy dares to take the initiative to provoke and fuck him. The young man with red hair cursed loudly, waved his spring knife, and rushed towards Ma Taizhu. The other few people also moved at the same time. Only the young man with a scarred face stood still, his face calm, and he looked like a smart pearl in his grasp. But soon, the expression on his face suddenly froze. The four people who rushed forward didn't even touch the corner of Matiju's clothes, so they all flew backwards. They smashed onto the hard road one after another, bruised and swollen, and finally let out screams of agony. How dare you learn from others to rob with just this little skill? Matiju gave the four people a disdainful glance, then turned his gaze to the young man with a scar face and grinned, it's your turn. The latter's face changed and he sneered, Kid, I didn't see that you actually have a few brushes. Let me, Shaoli, come and meet you today. He took out three small knives and twirled them in his hand, exuding a master-like aura. But before he could even take action, Ma Taizhu had already bullied himself and approached. In a situation where he couldn't react, he slapped him and on the spot, causing his mouth and nose to bleed. The small knife in his hand also came out. The young man with a scarred face covered his rapidly swollen cheeks and stared at Ma Taizhu in shock, how could you? How could you? Ma Taizhu let out a sigh of disgust and said, even a scumbag like you dare to call him the literally flying dagger. It's an insult to these words. Scared face, with a youthful expression that turned pale with anger, gritted his teeth and shouted, kid, how dare you be so reckless? Do you know who we are? Ma Taizhu exclaimed in surprise, Oh, do you still have any extraordinary identities? The young man with a scar face sneered and said, Kid, you heard clearly. We are from the White Tiger Hall, and you have already caused a big trouble. White Tiger Hall? What kind of thing is that? I haven't heard of it. Ma Taizhu shook his head and had no idea what White Tiger Hall was. White Tiger actually knows. Upon hearing these words, the young man with a scarred face almost spewed out blood in anger. Kid, listen carefully. Our White Tiger Hall is. He was preparing to give Ma Taizhu some knowledge, but before he could finish speaking, he was mercilessly interrupted. Shut up and be honest, who instructed you to come over? The young man with a scarred face was taken aback and instinctively asked, How did you know someone was directing you? Ma Taizhu sneered, What do you think? The young man with a scarred face dared not ask again and gritted his teeth, saying, It's Tang Xiaojun from the Thousand Medicine Pavilion. When it comes to this matter, he gets angry. 
Not long ago, the other party found him and roughly talked about Mataiju. It is said that as long as you block the other party, you can get a windfall. In Tang Xiaojuan's description, Mataiju is just a mud leg from the countryside, easy to handle. Result, end of this chapter.